Okay. Good morning, everybody. So we're going to start today's definitely with Daf Dalid. We're starting in the bottom of 3B, around four lines from the bottom, where the Gemara had said this idea of a Tosefes Shavias, the idea uh, that, you, that you can add on to this, that you're supposed to add on to the sabbatical year, is a law from Moses at Sinai. Is that law from Moshe Misinai? So the Gemara asked the question, Vahani Hilsaninu. Is it really a law of Moshe Marsinai? Karaininu, it's based upon a Pasik. What's the Pasik? Because it says in the verse, it says in the verse, it it says, Shesh Yamim Tavol, Vayomashvish Tishbos, Bharish of Hatsir Tishbos. It says in Exodus 34, actually about the mitzvah of Shabbos, it's six days you 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 shall work the you shall work, and on the seventh day you shall rest. Harish Hatsir shall you shall cease from plowing and harvesting. And Rabbi Kiva says, Ain Omar, It can't be that this verse is referring to just not plowing and harvesting in the sabbatical year. It already says in the Torah that you're not allowed to sow your field or your vineyard. So Rabbi Kiva says, from here we see that there's a Pasuk that tells us that it's referring to meaning to say you can't plow the field or harvest the field to help the food grow better in the seventh year. And you can't harvest what came out from you can't harvest what came out from the uh, the seventh year what into the eighth year. So we see from here the concept of of not um, of having a tosef shvius of ha- adding on something to the sabbatical year, whereas Rabbi Shmuel says ma charish rishus av klatzir rishus. Rabbi Shmuel says no, the pasuk is not referring to the sabbatical year; it's referring to Shabbos, and it's telling us as follows: It's just saying that just like plowing that's optional is prohibited, so too harvesting that's optional is prohibited. Yatsa Katsira Omer, but this Pasik is coming to tell us that harvesting of the Omer, which is a biblical law to do, meaning to say the bringing of the Omer offering on the 16th day of Nisan, that you would go out at the fir- after the first day of Pesach at night and cut the barley, harvest the barley, so you could bring it as a as a tenufasa omer the next day, that that is a mitzvah, she mitzvah, that that overrides the Shabbos and you do it on Shabbos. So therefore, Rabbi Akiva has a pasuk. So why would you say that it's a law from Moses at Sinai that you're not allowed to work the that you have to do to a sefer that you have to add on to the sabbatical year? So Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak says, okay, there's two separate laws. We need Allah Moshe Misinai to tell us that even though you're not allowed to work the land prior to the sabbatical year, that you have to add on. But one month before the sabbatical year, if you have a field which has 10 saplings in it, the Eser Natios, you're allowed to work the land. And the cry and the verse, says Rabbi Akiva, this is what Rabbi Yitzchak would say, and the verse is a Meser Zekene. The verse is to tell us that you have to add on and you can't work, work the field if there's just old trees in it. So the Gemara says, wait, that doesn't make sense. But keeping the Hilchas of Mishra Yalda, since we have a law from Moses at Sinai telling us that we can work the field to for the purpose of the young trees. Lav memela, we would know memela. Memela is one of those words that we can't translate. It's like we would know in, we would have figured out on our own, zikena asira, that an elder, that uh, that the old trees, not the saplings, but the, but the regular trees are prohibited to work the land even prior to the sabbatical year. So rather, the Gemara concludes, Rabbi Akiva Akiva has a verse. Rabbi Akiva says, this is a verse based upon the Torah, the laws of Tosef Eshvis, that you add on to the sabbatical year. But Rabbi Yishmael says it's a law from Moshe at Sinai. Rabbi Rabbi Yishmael says it's a law from Moses at Sinai. So says the Gemara, so says the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan comes along and Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Gamliel based Dino, Midiaraisa Batalahu. There will be Rabbi and their Bezdin, they nullify this concept of Tosefeshvis. They said there's no such thing as Tosefeshvis anymore. 
they 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 got rid of it. They 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 said they nullify this concept that you're not allowed to plow in the field uh, uh, if there, even if there's old trees 30 days prior to Rosh Hashanah of the seventh year. He said, so, and what's the reason why Rabbi Gamil and his court were able to nullify it? They found uh, a, a support from the Torah that gave them the strength to nullify it. How are they able to do this? They found the support from the Torah that gave them the strength to nullify it. What is that? My timer, what's their source? Source is based upon the fact that it says, Gamar Shabbos Shabbos me Shabbos Bereshis. That he, we learned that from a Gezerah Shava, from the t- word that appears by Shabbos, by the sabbatical year, and the Shabbos that appears by Bereshis. Shabbos Bereshis, the reference to the Shabbos that, are, that refers to the Shabbos that we celebrate every week. Malalan, he has and just like when it comes to a regular Shabbos, Shabbos is prohibited, <coughs> but before and then afterwards is permitted, even though we have a concept of toast for Shabbos, still, according to this, Mary saying it's prohibited, but before and afterwards it's permitted. Afghan, he has suro fanel acharam return. So, too, by the sabbatical year, we would say it's permitted, it's permitted, it's prohibited, but before and afterwards is permitted. So, Maske for Ravashi, so Ravashi challenges us. This. So, Ravashi says, he challenges Rabbi Yochanan, Mandam or Hochasa, according to Rabbi Yishmael who says uh, uh, that, that, that there's prohibition to plow even prior to the Rosh Hashanah of the sabbatical year. Asr Gzeir Shava and Ikra Halchasa. Can the Gzeir Shava, can this word Shava Shava is coming up root? You're coming up with the Gzeir Shava, but we have a law from Moses Sinai. Your Gzeir Shava, your teaching here can't uproot it. Uman Amar Kran, according to Rabbi Akiva, based upon the verse. Can, the, can your can your drasha can your drasha from Rabbi Gamliel come and uproot the biblical law of of the verse that says that there's Tosefa Shvius that we add on to the sabbatical year even before the sabbatical year? Alamar Rashi, so Ravashi says, no, we'll tell, uh, we'll say how Rabbi Gamliel and his core were able to nullify this this concept of of Tosfos Shvius, he says that says Rav Asher, and the little base dinu sabri like Rabbi Shmuel, the Amar Hilchos Akmiru. And they said, you know, they didn't hold that there was a verse. They said there was a tradition of Alchem Moshe Misiri like Rabbi Shmuel that you have to add on to the sabbatical year. The Chigamiri Hilchosab is mentioned based on Mikdash Kaim, and they said, when is this halacha? This halacha when it was established was only when the temple was standing. But since there's no temple standing, then it wasn't Allah Moshe Misinai anymore. And so that's the concept. Well, just like we say that the, the law of the Hilfus of Esther Natios is, is, is conflated with Nisu Hamayim and Arava. And so just like the Nisu Hamayim and the Arava are also only when the temple is standing, also the law of the law of which is is only when the temple is standing. That's how Rabbi Gamliel and his court were able to nullify it. That's a real slippery slope there, because you could say that temple destruction nullifies anything. So, right, so the question is, could we do say sometimes that the temple, that certain laws are only applicable when the temple is standing? But, right, how did, how did Rabbi Gamliel know that you could say that the, that the temple of nullification um, severed this law, which is not necessarily connected, connected to the temple, but he had a Gzeir Shavar, Rabbi Gamliel is best, and they had a teaching from the Torah to say, they didn't just make it up, they had a teaching from the Torah, a Gzeir Shavar that says, that just like we have a Lach HaMosh Misinai, that when the temple is around, we we must keep this concept of Tos Shvius, but when the temple is not around, we don't keep this concept of, of Tos Shvius anymore. So now we didn't embrace that specifically that these these three temples. Were you just saying okay, those two? Right. So so that's also it's connected to it's connected to those other two examples from the Brisa that the Brisa is referring to Esther Nitios and also to Niso Hamayim and and Arava. Clearly, we I mean we we don't have an altar, we can't do the libation, and when we don't have the altar, we don't do the arava. So therefore, so therefore, it's logical to assume that there's a connection. So we said in our Mishnah that even though you're allowed to water the base from a mayan, 
You can't do it from the Megishamim, from rainwater, meaning to say you can't draw water from a pool of rainwater, and you can't draw water from a Meakilon, which is like a well, to, to water your base ashlach and your field that needs watering. Even though it's, you're going to lose money, it's also going to be considered to be too much work. And so therefore, since it's too much work, you can't do it. So it says, I understand why you can't use a well water because you're, you're pulling your bucket into the well and you're schlepping it up. It's so much work. But rainwater, my tircha ika, what, what, what is the big deal about a rainwater? You just, it's pulling in a pond and you just move the earth a little bit and, and then you get it. Uh, um, and, 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 and you just move it around there. You don't have to pull it up with buckets to do it. So therefore, so therefore, what's the big deal with the rainwater that you can't allow it? So Amar Rabbi Lazar, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Zera Megeshamim Atu Mekilon. He says, now, if you're gonna come to use the rainwater, to water your, your base hashlach and your, your field on the mountain that needs the water desperately, what's gonna happen next, chas v'shalom, is you might come to, to use the mei kilo, and that you might come to use the well water. So, uh, so, so that's that's the concern, that you might come to use the well water. So the Gemara says, Rabbi, Ravashi gives a different ex- explanation. That's the explanation of Rabbi Yochanan. Ravashi gives a different explanation. Ravashi says, no, Megushamim Gufayu, we day Megkilon also. He says, no, the rainwater itself can actually turn into well water, meaning to say, as, as the printed Rashi says, Kimadu Mina, Avya Muleya, Nasis Memeo Megkilon, Shaino Mole. So, it's one thing if the rainwater is very overflowing and you can just make it uh, a path so it goes down. But here, if possible, then when it comes too well and it stops flowing, you're going to have to take the buckets and fill up from the rainwater. It's going to become the exact same exertion that you will be doing from the, from the well water. So the Gemara says, And this is actually an argument from a teaching that Rabbi Zera taught to Amar Rabbi Zera, Amar Rabbi Yirmi Abara. Let's say you have naharos, it's like, uh, or, or, or like little streams of water, that draw their water from these ponds. So you have naharos, you have these like tributaries that draw their water from the ponds. So Rabbi Zera said in the name of Rabbi Yirmi, in the name of Shmuel, that you can use those to water your fields on Cholomoid. So Mar Islay to Rabbi Zera, so one is of the position that you, he agrees with Rabbi Zera, that you're allowed to use the, uh, these, the, the waters, the, the spring or the, 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 the springs that, that come forth from the pond. And as a printed Rashi says, And you were not going to be concerned that maybe the, that the, uh, the, the pond will, will, the, the pond will get too depleted. And then what's going to happen, uh, you're going to go and bring it from a different place, from a different, from a different stream. Uh, and so, but Rabbi Lazar, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, would say that we would make such a decree because, because where Rabbi Lazar says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, may Gishamim ought make Kalon. And Rabbi Ashi says, may Gishamim Gufayo will come to make, will make Kalon. So Rabbi Ashi would say, we can't use such a spring because it's it, it might get depleted. Whereas Rabbi Eliezer in the name of Rabbi Yochanan says, no, once you start allowing one thing, you're gonna allow the other thing. So, well, this is how, let's see how uh, the printer Rashi reads it. He says, Rabbi Lassa in the name of Rabbi Yochanan to Amar Gezeira Gazrina Megashamim Afiwa Hecha de Lopaski. He says, we always make a decree about rainwater, even where we're not worried it's going to be depleted, ought to make kevon. And that's his position. Whereas, me the Kamar of Ashi, make a shamim, maybe we make kevon, asi, miklad, Rabbi Yochanan, asar, afilu, do, asi, we make kevon. So Rabbi Yochanan is going to prohibit it, even if it can never come into a make kevon. And so, lay slayed the Rabbi Zera to Lo Gazer. So he would not, he would, he would not agree with Rabbi Zera because Rabbi Zera didn't make a decree, but Rabbi Yochanan would have always made a decree. So now we analyze the statement: Gufa, I'm a Rabbi Zera, I'm a Rabbi Bar Yirmi, I'm a Shmuel. The Haras of Moshe Mayim, Menagamim, Mutar Lahashkos, Me'Machol Shemoy. 
that you have these, these uh, streams that they draw the water from the swamp. You're allowed to water with them on Chalmoy. So that's the statement. Because again, why are we allowed to water? We're not worried. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not worried that you're going to come to use it from a well water. So, so, so the Gemara says, Eisve, Rabbi Yermiel, Rabbi Zera, Rabbi Yermiel challenges Rabbi Zera, Avo Lomi make Shavim, Lomi make Kilon. But doesn't it say explicitly that you're not allowed to, it says in our, in our Mishnah, you're not allowed to draw from a rainwater or from a well water. Armele Rabbi Yermiel, Berei, so Yermiel, Berei says, Yermiel, his son says, Hani Agamim, he says, these swamps, these ponds of bubble, Kamaya the Leposki Demo. They're never going to end off. We never have to be concerned that we're going to run out of water. And so therefore, since there, since these swamps, he says, Yermia, so Rabbi Zera said to Rabbi Yermia, he says, Yermia, Bari, Yermia, my son, these, uh, these swamps of Babylon, they're always flowing. And so therefore, the, the streams that, that they pull from them, they're not like ponds. They're, 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 and, so therefore, and so therefore, these streams, uh, if I, if I, if, um, these are the ones that I said you're allowed to water from them because you don't have to be concerned that maybe the water in them will ever be depleted yeah. and that you're going to come to have to draw from another place. Interesting, you know, you can't do time travel, but if he saw today's reality at the Tigris and the Euphrates, they all dried up. So, yeah, that's a good point. The today, he probably wouldn't say something else because the, we see the rivers today are being like suctioned off and everything. So it's a different story. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you can't you can't prophesize yeah. 1,500 years up, but we're good. So Tana Rabbanon, so the rabbis taught with respect to, since we're talking about the, the, the watering from, uh, from, from ditches that have water in them, Tana Rabbanon, Hapasikos, these are little ditches that were not were not specifically made for the fill to be filled with water. About brejos, these are ditches that they were made for the specifically to to collect water in them. Shenis mal mayamer of yamtiv. Let's say they became they became filled with water from the eve of yamtiv. Also lahaskus me machol shemoid. We're not allowed to use them to irrigate the fields with a chol moid because we're concerned that maybe the water will be depleted and you're going to have to bring from a faraway place and it'll be too much of a hardship. But if there was a, a furrow of water there that was that was channeling the water from the spring, that was Overus being named, that was uh, that was coming, uh, that was bringing the water, mutter, then you could water the field from this rainwater from on uh, from, uh, because even if the rainwater will be will be finished, you can you can always get the water from the from the ama. From the from the furrow, and so therefore you're not going to have to bring it from another place. We can say even if the even if the the rainwater itself is depleted, the canal is going to bring the water from a spring, and it'll eventually be refilled, and you don't have to go and get the water from another place. So we're not worried it's going to lead to a tircha, to an extra hardship. So Amrav Papa, who Sharuba Shalosa Sada shows some Yosa Hamayim. No, not no. That concern is only going to be alleviated if the majority of that field is, is water from that canal. But if it's not the majority of that field, then you're going to come and, and you're not going to wait for the canal and you're going to go and get the water from a different source. It's going to lead to a tear. Ravashi disagrees with Rav Papa. Ravashi says, no. He says, no, even if the majority of the field is no water from that canal, it's still going to be the case that because you'll say, okay, even if I don't fill it all up today, I'll fill it up for two or three days, and it's going to be better than rushing and, and, and working so hard to bring it from another place. Tana Rabbanon, so the rabbis taught, the Gemara is going to make a bright, so that clarifies this, this law of irrigating by two fields that are near each other. One is lower and one is higher. Tana Rabbanon, brecha shenotefes mayim mistei beis So let's say you have uh, Let's say basically, uh, so let's say you have two uh, fields, two fields that re really require water that you're allowed to water them a whole moid, and one is higher than the other. And on the side of the upper field, there is a uh, spring that, that, that feeds water into it. And between the two fields, there's a small pool of water. And so when you water the upper field from the spring, then the water drips 
and goes down from the upper field into the pool between the two fields. So you're allowed to, what, what this price is telling us is that you're allowed to irrigate the, uh, 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 the lower field from this, from, this, from this pool. And even though it's possible that, uh, that the pool will dry up in the middle, we don't have to be concerned that maybe you're gonna bring water from another place because the water will eventually get there from the upper field and drip into the lower field. Mar says, well, we did the sucker, but we but we know that it's gonna that it's that it's gonna dry up. And we have to be concerned that maybe he's gonna bring it from another place. So I'm Rabbi Yermi of Adain he me taf tafes. No, that which we learned in the price that you can water the lower field, that's when the water is still dripping from the upper field into the pool. Then certainly it's not gonna dry up. So I'm a rabbi, who shall apostle like my own He says, yeah, that's where the initial spring hasn't stopped. But if the initial spring stopped, if the source stopped, then you have a big problem and you can't do it. So, so, Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Manasseh, Mashtea, Rugo, Zulam, let's say you have two garden beds, one's above another. Well, you can't take the excess water from the lower field and, you know, draw it up with your bucket and water the upper field. Yoser, okay, I'm Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, Aruga, Achas, even in one garden bed itself, one is the upper part and the lower part of the same field. You can't water the upper field from the lower field because it's too much of a tear, too much hard work. You're allowed to water your, your, your vegetables in order to eat them. You want to get them fresh. So just before you pick them, you water them so they look nice and good. But if you do it in order to just make them look nice or not to look nice, in order to make them grow better for the future so that they're going to grow better, that's going to be prohibited. Ravina, because then you're watering something for after chomot. We see from here a second reason why something is permitted chomot. Right now, we see the first reason is if you're going to lose money. And the second reason is if you need it for chomot itself, you want to water it for chomot itself. Ravina the Rabbi Tosfa, the Kaazli, the Warcha, Ravina Rabbi Tosfa were walking along the road. Chazal, oh, Gavar, Dave, Dave, Dave. They saw a man who was uh, who was drawing water with his pail in order to in order to water his vegetables on on Chomoi. So Amar le Rabbi Tosfa, le Ravina, le Isi Mar Shamte. So Rabbi Tosfa said to Ravina, excommunicate him. He's drawing water from the bucket on Chomoi. He's doing something wrong. Amar le. So Ravina said to Rabbi Tosfa, no, he's permitted. He's, he wants to eat them on Chomoy. That's why he's bringing the bucket to draw the water on. He's trying to eat it on Chomoy. So he says, Misa, no, you're reading the price are wrong. When it says, do you think my Madal, Madal, Maya doesn't mean that you're allowed to draw up the water? Madal doesn't mean you're drawing up water. No, what does Madal mean? My, we're on the top of Dalit Amod Bays. What is Madlin? Shalufe. It means, it refers to not drawing water in a bucket. It means something else entirely. Just like we don't always know what the words mean. They don't always know what the words mean. And he says it means Shalufe. It means that, that you're allowed to uproot the vegetables, that they were all bunched together, and you can uproot them in order to eat them. And so therefore, that way they'll grow a little better. I guess they'll expand a little better. And, and the ones that remain. So you could get rid of some so that others remain. So you're allowed to do that in order to eat it on Chomoy. It's not a made of fun him uh, that somebody wants to you know, like clear out some of the, the grapes that are all clustered together uh, so that they'll, they'll grow better. So we're talking about a case, this is the Mishnah from Peya, that you're not allowed to take from the corner of the field uh, because that belongs to the poor. But here in this case, since you would do it for your own grapes to make your own grapes grow better, you're allowed to take away from the poor some of their grapes so that their grapes could grow better. That's the position of Rabbi Yehuda, whereas Ramir says, no, shalor rashai, vein or rashai b'shalanim. He said, no, you could you do it for yourself, it's permitted because you want the top quality grapes. But the poor people, they want more average grapes. So you wouldn't be allowed to do it. I'm away, but Tanya modeled. So, so we see from here, that you're that that with for the poor people, uh, there's a dispute whether or not you're allowed to do it. But you see, you see from here that model means not that you're drawing buckets, but that you could, but that you're allowed to uproot parts of the parts of the vegetables so that the others grow better. So Ravina said back to Rabbi Tosfav, I'm away, but Tanya, model, it says specifically 
You do it for the vegetables in order for in order to eat them. Model Mayim, you that you draw buckets of water. I'm like Tanya Tanya. So he said, okay, you have explicit text, you're right. And I and that's the reason why we should not excommunicate him. He would have excommunicated this poor man who was following explicitly what the Bryce says. You're not allowed to make it said in our mission, you're not allowed to make Ugios for the Gefanim. Gefanim, we know what those are. Those are vineyards. You're not allowed to do that on Chomo. What's Ugios? My Ugios. I'm Rabbi Huda Banki. Banki. These are, we know what Banki are. These are ditches that the little uh, pits that they would make under the grapevines and the olive trees. Uh, and so they would put water in them to irrigate them. And so we see you know how to do that on Chomoi. Tanya na miachi eloi in Ugios. Bedidin shebe ikari zeisim shebe ikari kafanim. These are ditches that they make around the roots of the olive trees and the grapevines. Aini, is this really the case that Ugios are banki? While Rabbi Yehuda shar of Nebar zeisim and mevet banki lekarmeon. Rabbi Yehuda allowed them to make banki for their vineyards. Uh, and if Ugios are banki, how did he allow it? So Gemara explains, no, Lokasha, Abba Chadati, Abba Tiki. And our Mishnah will say, you're not allowed to do it. They were talking about new ditches, which is very hard to do. And so therefore, you're not allowed to do it on Chalmoy. But what Rabbi Yehuda allowed were old ditches in an old field in, where they have little ditches already and they just got filled in. He just allowed them to clear them out. Now we sit, learned in our Mishnah that Rabbi Lazar Ben Azariah said, you're not allowed to make like a, a furrow uh, to bring the water to you from the spring on Chomoed or on the sabbatical year. So the Gemara explains, well, Bisham Moed, I understand why you can't start it originally on Chomoed Mishom de Katarach, because you're doing a lot of work. It's extra work. Elishvi is my time, and why can't you bring the water down to your field on the sabbatical year? So once says the problem is it looks like you're hoeing for the sabbatical year because what you're doing is one who digs the canal it's he's digging up the he's digging up the earth to make like a, 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 a path for the water and it looks like you're hoeing the field and you're not allowed to hoe a field in the sabbatical year. The Chad Amar and the other says no no because what you're doing is when you dig out the canal. You're taking the earth that you put out and you're putting it on the side of the canal. And that's soft earth that you can easily plant in. And so therefore it looks like you're basically plowing, like you're preparing the banks for sowing. My benaya, what's the difference between them? Well, the difference between them is if the water would come immediately after it. So it's obviously that you did it for a canal. There's still a prohibition because you have the earth that you plowed and you can now sow it. Around the Amar nation near Kaoder, but according to one that says it looks like you're hoeing, wait, because it's obviously the case that you're not hoeing because you're you have water coming in. Well, not the nation near Kaoder, but according to one that says it looks like you're hoeing, well, he should also be concerned that you're preparing the field for for by the banks for for seeding because you basically plowed up soft earth. So the Gemara says, okay, you're right. So the difference between them is if you took the earth that you dug out to make the canal and you throw far away from the banks. According to the one that says you're preparing the banks for sowing lake up because you don't have that concern because you threw it far away. So you can't really sow there. It still looks like you're hoeing. But according, why isn't everybody worried that you're going to be, that it looks like you're hoeing? So the Gemara says, No, also when you hoe, you really typically, you hoe up the earth and then you put it right where you are. You don't typically throw it far away. And so therefore he says that if you throw it far away, it doesn't look like you're hoeing. Amemer Masnila, the Amemer taught, when he went to Smisha, he taught that Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah himself said that the reason why you can't make the Amal on Shviyas was it makes you Nirika Oder, because it looks like you're hoeing. The Kasha, the Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah, the Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah. And therefore, it was difficult for him to say this because Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah taught something else somewhere else. Me, I'm Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah, call on Nirika Oder. So does Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah really say anything that looks like you're hoeing is prohibited? There are many, Osa Adam as Zivo Otzer, but we learned in the Mishnah and Shviyas that a person can. Hold on, isn't throwing the dirt? Uh, I guess that it's a good question. Isn't throwing? Isn't that concerted exertion? I guess we'd have to say that it's not concerted exertion 
just taking extra two steps and throwing it somewhere else or like spreading it around? I guess it's not, but it's a fair question. Probably, probably we'd have to look in the Rishonim to see if somebody, anybody raises that, that, that interesting point. So, 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 so for Aminu, those are the Lezer and Azariah say that you're not really allowed to uh, dig the canal because it looks like you're hoeing. But what about the other thing? He says, where if you have manure, osa dum as zivo ota, you're allowed, a person is allowed to take all his manure in his field and collect it all together to, to guard it. And it doesn't, in his field, and it doesn't look like he's fertilizing his field because the person who sees it will, will understand that he's just basic, and you don't have to be concerned that the person is going to say that you're fertilizing, that you're fertilizing your field. Whereas Rabbi Meir Oser, Remember, Mayor says it's prohibited unless you dig it down into the ground or you pile it up. But just to spread it out would be prohibited. So if you dig it down deep, it's obvious that you're saving it. But uh, it, it, for later, or if you pile it up, it's obviously not using it as, as manure. And also, if he had, uh, he put a if he put a little bit of manure into the field prior to the sabbatical year, he could add on to it in the sabbatical year, and he doesn't it doesn't need doesn't need to put it deeper because it doesn't look like he's fertilizing it. Rebbe Lezer ben Azaria Oser Achi Yamik Shlosho Achi Agbia Shlosho Achi Itein Alasela. Rebbe Lezer ben Azaria in this case he's going to say uh, so so Rebbe Lezer ben Azaria in this case is going to say it's going to be prohibited even to add on a little bit of zevel, a little bit of manure, until you make it deeper, three tzvachim to the ground, or until you, until you place it three tzvachim high, or, or until you put it all on a rock, because then it doesn't look like a zevel. So it's a, there's a difficulty here, because why does Rebbe Lezer ben Azariah allow you to dig it three tzvachim deep in order to put the manure? And why isn't he concerned that people are going to say, oh, you're hoeing your field in a sabbatical year. Why is he concerned about hoeing in this case? So it's a contradiction between Rebbe Lezer and Azariah when, when manure is not worried you're hoeing. But here, but when the case of the canal is concerned that you're hoeing. So Rebbe Zeh, Rebbe Ramam, Mochad Amar, Kigon Shehemik, Mochad Amar, Zivo Mochiachoav. So, so they give two answers to this. One, question, one answer is no, it will, where, he, where he actually dug deeper prior to the sabbatical year, so he's not doing the hoeing now, or the other cases, no, the manure proves that it's not hoeing, and so therefore it's gonna be permitted. So, okay, so that's, that's a lot of agriculture. The rest of the week is not as much uh, technical, uh, technical agriculture. It's a little bit, a little bit easier. Ends up to be a Mara sign, we should say. They, exactly, exactly. Okay.